Alleluia, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. So uh, before I talk about anything else, just uh, this is uh, Palm's group. This is an after school group from St. John's Lutheran School, uh, and they uh, are also going to help lead our first song for us in just a minute as well. But thank you for doing that pre service. Let's give God thanks and praise for them using their gifts again this morning for us in that way. Thank you. A uh, special welcome to, to our guests and, and that we have with us today, those that are also joining us online. Um, our prayer is that you would be moved today by what God has to offer here as he gives us his gifts uh, through his sacrament, through his word, uh, and through what we do together as we return our praise to him for all that he has done for us. My name is Andy Becker. I get to be one of the pastors here at St. John's. Uh, and if you could, uh, if you hear my voice, fill out that, uh, uh, scan that QR code, fill out that attendance card, it'll link it to. If that's easier for you, you can do that in the lobby after the service at one of the kiosks few things that I want to make sure you know about that are going on in these days. First of all, uh, you may have noticed on your way in that there is a bake sale uh, in the lobby. That's our sixth graders. They're going to outdoor ed-, ed this week, and that's helping to fray some of the costs for their outdoor ed trip this week. Coming up on Saturday, April 20th, that's next weekend, uh, there's going to be a trivia night over in the school gymnasium. Um, the deadline to register for that is today. So if you want to put a table together, uh, you need to register for the trivia night today. Um, the, there's a St. John's Golf League. That's a summer league that starts up. That'll start up on May 8th. Uh, there's information about that over by the nursery. There's a table there. You can talk with Dave Weber, uh, who's the commissioner of that league, for more information to get signed up, be part of that. Some great fellowship, a great time uh, that goes on through that summer golf league. Uh, finally, on the way out of uh, worship today, um, we're going to be handing out slips of paper with food needs on them. This month, that's going to, to help seminary, the Seminary Food Bank. Uh, I personally uh, and our family, we were blessed through that uh, food bank when we were students, as you could come and get groceries there. Uh, what a blessing that was to us and I know to other uh, seminary students um, as they are going through their studies right now. So you'll get that on the way out of worship today. Without any other announcements, let's go ahead and stand and greet those who are in worship. And I know our Palms group is going to get ready for their first song here in, as we do that. Well, in just a moment, we're going to uh, be led in our first song by our Palms group. They're going to sing the, the chorus and the first verse of this song, and then uh, we're going to be invited to join with them on the second chorus all the way through the other verses. So uh, follow as indicated on the screen. Um, just uh, we give God thanks and praise. We are in the Easter season, and this is an Easter song.
We make our beginning today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Scripture tells us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for us, to rise again and proclaim forgiveness of sins to all the world. Lord God, you had prepared this from before the foundation of the world. You'd prophesied about it in the scriptures. And in Jesus, Lord, you fulfilled all your promises to us. Help us to live with joy and confidence because Jesus is alive. We pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please be seated for our first scripture lesson read this morning by Sheila Miller of our congregation. Our epistle reading this morning is from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what will, what will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our holy, please rise for our holy gospel as you are able. Our gospel is from Luke chapter 24. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened, and they thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled and why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Please be seated. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, through the pierces drowned and song. What hearts are Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now, one of the things that I love to do is to teach. I love to, to help people understand uh, difficult or, or new concepts, to help them know the subject matter well. You know, I especially love doing this with God's Word helping people to, to visualize and, and picture the events of the Bible. It's one of the reasons I think I love maps so much, if you've ever been in one of my Bible studies. But even more, I love people to understand and know the heart of the matter. And, and while trying to gauge understanding and comprehension, I developed a phrase that I didn't even realize I was saying, but I would begin to say a lot. And so I would say this, and everybody else knew that I was saying this phrase, but I didn't have a clue. Maybe you've had something like that before with a, a verbal tick or a hand gesture or, or something that you do. But I would say, does that make sense? And I had a 
couple good friends that let me know that I was doing that. So I've been trying to break that habit. And so, but I still want to gauge if people understand and know what's going on. And so I'll say, do you understand? Does that make sense? (laughs) So today we're going to be looking at Jesus uh, appearing that first Easter evening to the disciples. Now it's uh, the, the same time, the same account that we looked at last week. Last week we looked at it from John's perspective, from his gospel. And he talked about how Thomas wasn't there, but then the next week that he was. Well, in Luke's gospel, he lets us know about some of the other things that have happened that day. In fact, our account that that Sheila read for us today, it started with, while they were talking about these things. Well, what things were they talking about exactly then? Well, that Jesus had appeared to two unnamed disciples, probably not part of the 12, while they were walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And then when they got back, they ran all the way the eight miles back and, and told the disciples what had happened. And, and they said, well, Peter saw him too. And, and we saw that the tomb was empty. And, and Mary and the women saw him. While they were talking about these things, wondering and not understanding, Jesus appears in their midst. And he gives them a, a greeting. And he welcomes them and puts them at ease. And then to, to prove that he's not a spirit, not a ghost, he says, look at my hands. Look at my feet. Touch me and see. A, a spirit, a ghost doesn't have flesh and blood as you see that I have. And in John's introduction to the letter, first letter that he wrote, he said, now concerning that which our eyes have seen and our hands have touched concerning Jesus. They touched him. They saw that Jesus wasn't just spiritually alive. He wasn't just a spirit, but he was physically resurrected from the dead. And it says they disbelieved for joy, right? Have you ever had that moment where it's too good to be true? That's what they were experiencing there. But Jesus, he wants them, he needs them to fully understand not only that he is physically alive, but what it means. He wants it to make sense. And so Jesus tells them, hey, all of this has been done in accordance with what I told you. Remember, I've been walking with you for three years, and time and again I would say that I would suffer and die and on the third day rise. He says it's also in line with what is written about me in the books of Moses, in the prophets, in the Psalms. And that three-part division, the books of Moses, the the prophets, and the Psalms, was shorthand then and, and still can be today for the entirety of the Old Testament. And so Jesus is saying that all of the Old Testament points to and prepares for for Jesus. It predicts, it prepares, and points to what Jesus has done. And then Jesus begins to unpack how the scriptures point to him. Wouldn't that have been amazing? To to be there in that room with Jesus for the first Christian Bible study. To hear how Jesus was saying how all of the Old Testament, as he went through the passages, point to who he was. Wow, to, to know what he would have said. Well, we don't know the specifics, but, but Jesus actually tells us the, the summary of what he says. He says that all of these scriptures, that is the Old Testament, point to three things about him. First, that he would suffer and die. Second, that the Christ, the Messiah, not only would suffer and die, but would rise physically from the dead. And third, that repentance and forgiveness would be proclaimed in his name. All of this, he says, came from the Old Testament scriptures. That's what the Hebrew Bible says about the Messiah, the anointed one, the promised one, the suffering servant of God. And so Jesus walked through all of those stories from the books of Moses and the passages. He walks through the the history of God's people and shows how it points to him through the Psalms and from the prophets that showed these things that the Messiah would suffer 
die, rise, and bring forgiveness, not just to some people, not just to the Jews, but to all people. And so for, for them and for us, to see and understand the Old Testament is to see it's all about Jesus. It's preparing, predicting, and pointing to who he is and his teaching, to what he's done in his death and resurrection, in his mission, not only to the Jews, but again, for all people. That's what he taught them. And because they saw him and touched him and knew that he was alive, because he opened their minds in their hearts to understand the scriptures, they were changed from disciples to apostles, from hiding behind locked doors to being willing to be locked up or worse for their faith. All of them, because they moved from confusion to understanding, willingly not only changed their lives, but were willing to die, to give up their life because they unwaveringly to the person confessed the physical resurrection of Jesus and what it meant for them and for all people. Now, 2,000 years later, as we look at the, the resurrection, maybe we struggle a little bit with clarity and confusion and understanding about the fullness and the importance of what it is. I mean, we love singing songs like Jesus Christ is risen today or I know that my Redeemer lives. We love responding, he is risen indeed, alleluia. But like the disciples, maybe sometimes we struggle with understanding as well. But this is something we need to understand to our core what it means. So what was it exactly that Jesus showed those disciples in Scripture? What predicted, prepared, and pointed to Jesus? Well, we see in the Old Testament first that he would suffer and die. Way back in Genesis, in Genesis chapter 315, it's called the, the first gospel we see that Adam and Eve are promised that one of their descendants will crush the head of the serpent, but it will cost him his life as the serpent strikes his heel. In Exodus, we see that the blood of the Passover lamb brings freedom from slavery to the Egyptians. And Jesus, he is the lamb of God who brings freedom from slavery to sin through his blood. In Numbers, the, the object of wrath, a fiery serpent that was biting people so that they were dying, was lifted up on a bronze pole. And when people looked to it, they would live. And Jesus, who's placed on an object of wrath, the cross, is raised high. And when we look to Jesus, we live. In Zechariah 12, it's prophesied that they will look on me whom they have pierced. In Isaiah 50, the servant of God gives his back to those who will strike him. Later in Isaiah 53, we see that the, the servant of the Lord would be pierced and crushed for our iniquities, for our sins. By his wounds we are healed and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. As Jesus is the sin bearer on the cross, it was pointed to and predicted there by God. And it gets a couple verses later. It says that his grave will be with the wicked and he'll be laid in a rich man's tomb, pointing that he would be crucified between two robbers, two wicked men, and laid in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. The Bible points to and predicts and prepares us for the servant of God, the Messiah, Jesus, dying for our sin. But it also points to his resurrection. David in Psalm 16 says that they will not abandon my soul to Sheol, nor the Holy One will see corruption, pointing to that his body would not remain in the tomb and begin to decay, 
but would rise from the dead. In Jonah, we see a picture of of the resurrection as Jonah is three days in the, the belly of the fish, as good as dead, and then brought back to life. Jesus was truly dead in the belly of the earth and raised to life again. The servant song of Isaiah that we just looked at also talks about how even though he'd be cut off from the land of the living, that second part there, he will see his offspring and shall prolong his days even after he has been crushed and pierced and killed. And in Job, as he's talking about not just the resurrection of Jesus, but the resurrection on the last day, talks to and points with confidence that he knows his Redeemer lives. And at the last, even though Job's skin and bones have been destroyed, he says, in my own flesh, in my own eyes, I will see God, whom I, my eyes shall behold, and not another. And the Old Testament is also full of the, the, the mission of God as the Messiah, the, the one sent, the one that is coming, will be God's prophet, priest, and king, fully and finally the new, the greater, the best Israel as it was supposed to be. We see that begin back with Abraham. As he promises, God promises Abraham that through one of your descendants, all the nations, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And to David, he promises that one of his descendants will be king on his throne forever. This great passage from Isaiah that we read every Christmas time, the, the child being born. But look what is talked about who this child is. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, the prince of peace. Not just for some, but for all. And to Moses, uh, Moses prophesies that there will be a prophet that arises that will be greater than him. And in Isaiah, we hear about how all the nations will be drawn to God's holy mountain. And Daniel, one of my favorites, the Son of Man, one like the Son of Man, a favorite title that Jesus calls himself, is given all power and authority and dominion over all nations and over all the earth so that all peoples and languages should serve him. In Isaiah 60, all nations will come to the light of the Messiah of the Christ. And finally, talking about the ministry of Jesus, that he will bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, and proclaim year of the Lord's favor, forgiveness and restoration for all people. Now, Jesus, he may have used these and opened up, e and, and then even many more passages besides these to the disciples that first Easter evening. The ones that I've gone through are only scratched the surface of all the verses that, that point to and, and prophesy and predict and, and show us who Jesus is and what he came to do. And while I speak only as a student of Scripture, Jesus that first Easter evening spoke as the author. He spoke of the one who was there for all of the events. After all, he said, before Abraham was, I am. But today we see clearly, we understand the resurrection is a real event. Jesus was not a ghost. Right? I love he even asks for a snack and eats in front of them to show that he is flesh and blood. But this was predicted and prophesied so that the disciples and all believers, including you and me, would know that God had done this, that he, would pre that he had prepared it so that we would know and believe and that this would change us too. See, this is bigger than anything else. Jesus died. He took your punishment and sin this was God's plan from before the foundations of the world. But part of God's plan also was that Jesus would not stay dead, but would rise again, conquering sin and death forever. It's not a fleeting victory like, like our sports teams might have. 
It's even greater than any family success story. This is eternal. It will truly last. Last uh, Monday evening, I was watching the NCAA Division I basketball tournament. March Madness, the final game was on Monday. And I was watching all of the hype leading up to that game. And they had a, a, a former basketball star that was coming out and was, they did a, a well-done video as he's talking to both of the teams. And he was talking about legacy, about being remembered, about the monumental moment of this game for whoever won. And yes, in that moment, it is meaningful for those players and those families and that fan base, but its effects will fade the joy will dissipate, and even the memories and the meanings will fade. After all, how many people, even in this room, did the the Yukon victory on Monday really affect? I mean, is your life significantly different because of who won or lost? Even if you happen to win your pool, or like me, lost badly. What about a year from now? Or 50 years from now? Do you know who won 50 years ago? Or what about 100 years from now or 1,000 or 2,000 years from now? Will it matter who won in Arizona in 2024? But what we're talking about today, what Jesus is helping us to understand right now is what will last, what truly matters. Jesus died and rose, and through repentance for the forgiveness of sins that he offers, he's forgiven you and given you eternal life. This is God's plan that's woven throughout history. And because of this plan and his work, you are forgiven, you are whole, and you will live forever. This is something that isn't just monumental for a moment, but its importance is everlasting. It's just as meaningful 2,000 years later. Does that make sense? Do you understand? This is what Jesus did for the disciples. He opened their hearts and minds to understand. And it's what he does for you today as well. To see through his word, you see You know and you believe. And as he sent the Holy Spirit to them so that they would be reminded of all that he spoke to them and so that they would never be alone, so too he sends you his spirit so that you know the words of Jesus and believe them and are never alone. Through Jesus, you are forever changed. Through him, you are restored with hope now and eternity with him forever. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. Just as scripture predicted, prepared, and pointed. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding, may guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, even until he comes again. Amen. At this time, we confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I invite you to stand as we confess our Christian faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. This time we're going to invite our ushers forward to receive our tithes and our offerings. We give always in response to what God has given to us. May he bless you richly during this time of worship. Great are you, Lord.
Please stand as we go to our Lord in prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, thank you for rising from the dead, for showing yourself to so many witnesses and for testifying to what you would do in the scriptures. In the midst of this world's sins and sorrows and uncertainties, give us peace and confidence in the knowledge of his salvation and confident hope in the resurrection of the dead. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, by the incarnation of your Son and the reconciliation of his cross, you have made us your children and gathered us into your holy church. Sustain the preaching of your holy word and its message of repentance for the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name among us and all the nations of the world. Lord, in your mercy, give peace, Lord, to our homes and enliven them by Christ's resurrected life. Let the forgiveness of sins reign among husbands and wives, parents and children. Thank you for the marriage of Miranda Polite and Larry Price married here this weekend. And assure those who live alone that they too are your children upheld and by your right hand. Lord, in your mercy. God of love, thank you for the baptism this weekend of Bella. Sustain her in her faith and strengthen the ministries of our church so that all your baptized children in this place may grow in faith. Bless the search for our children's ministry director and be with Adam and Cassie Perez as Adam prepares to serve among us as our music director. Lord, in your mercy. God of all comfort, you have compassion on those who are afflicted. Remember and have mercy on Dennis Ahall, Sharon Barner, Debbie Christ, Charlotte Dunn, Sharon Grodeke, Judy Hetz, Diane Klima. Marilyn Coker, Mary Agnes McGraw, Tammy Meyer, Bobby and Julie Schrader, Shirley Smith, Larry Snelson, Becky Stoley, Stephen Williams, Lynn, the mother of Stephanie Jacobs Meyer, and all those in need of your healing and deliverance. Lord, in your mercy. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by your son's crucifixion, all sins have been blotted out. Send us now the blessed refreshment of his bodily presence in the sacrament of the altar and make us fit partakers in repentance for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night on which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated.
Please rise. And now may this, the very body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in true faith, even to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. As we go out today, we go as Easter people, as those who have uh, experienced the risen Jesus, who have seen the scriptures that point to and predict and, and ready us for all that God has given to us. And he sent us his spirit so that we can go out with this good news to all that we encounter. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.